Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Inshallah, what I'm going to share with you today is really, really interesting. And uh, it will, if you really think deep about it, it's going to blow your mind away. You're going to be like, I can't believe this is in Quran. And more than that, I can't believe that this is so clearly right there in Surah Al-Kahf. We're going to today talk about the effect of uh, AI. Oh, sorry, IA. Artificial intelligence, no, AI, sorry, I have dyslexia, I mix things up sometimes. AI, artificial intelligence, we're going to talk about automation, the effect of this, and what does Surah Al-Kahf tell us about AI? Believe it or not, it's there in plain sight. And you will see this today, and so, inshallah, let's get straight to it. <clears throat> the ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I am talking about is ayah number 103, 104. And if you connect it with the other ayahs around it yourself, you will see how fascinating of a subject this is. Okay? قُلْ بَعْدَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ قُلْ O Prophet وسلم, tell them, or ask them in this case, هَلْ أُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِالْأَخْصَرِينَ أَعْمَالًا Should I tell you of the greatest losers in action? Right? Those actions or those deeds, those works that are, they are the losers. And this is Sutul Kahf talking about, and this is the ten, last 10 ayahs that specifically protect you from the jal, right? So Allah says something very, 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 very interesting. الذي, those people who went astray or went wrong or made mistakes or their plans went wrong, all of those meanings fit it. Oh, a very important point about tafsir. What is the greatest, number one form of tafsir? Meaning, there's different types of tafsir. Like, for example, tafsir bi riwayah. There's an ayah and then there's a riwayah, a hadith of the Prophet or another narration of a Sahabi, and you connect it with the Qur'an, where they connect, and you can have tafsir with that. You have other forms of tafsir. The tafsir that is the most basic is tafsir bil is the tafsir of the language itself. It is Qur'an in Arabi and la'allakum ta'qilun. This is a Qur'an in Arabic. The Arabic language is the tafsir of the Qur'an, meaning the, Quran, the Arabic language gives tafsir of the Qur'an, which also has to do with Al-Qur'an yufassiru ba'dahu ala ba'd Parts of Qur'an explain other parts of Qur'an And this is the primary form of tafsir And in that Al-Qur'an yufassiru ba'dahu ala ba'd Is, is specifically Qur'an in Arabian Liqawmi ya'qilun So it is a Qur'an in Arabic So people will understand those people who works, whose struggles, whose plans, whose efforts went wrong in this life. In this life. They didn't succeed. Ultimately, they failed. And what were they thinking? What were they planning? What were they wanting? And they were calculating, they were expecting, they were estimating. And they were calculating, they were estimating that they are perfecting sunnah. So this is the key word we will be looking at today. Sunnah generally means to manufacture. But let us continue, inshallah, into some other parts before we get into the Qur'an and what it amazingly says. Something very interesting. You know, in America, a lot of people complain, oh, I hate in hearing, you know, because these, these big companies, what do they do? They hire foreigners to be the call centers. You all know this, right? And that's good for a lot of Muslims, but a lot of Americans don't like that. Well... AI is becoming pretty intelligent. First of all, AI may just be the entire call center. It's just robots talking in an accent that you can't even tell if it's a robot or a human. But besides that, what are they doing? This particular, this is just one of the many different apps. 
uh, Beidou's voice cloning AI can swap genders and remove accents. So now you have a Hindu calling from uh, India on behalf of Google, right? And his voice no longer comes with an accent because you have AI working with his voice to make his voice sound American, right? And, and, and they can make this uh, guy, his voice sound like a girl and like an American girl. And we wouldn't know anything, we wouldn't know any other way, right? So even though he's a guy, he's calling himself with a girl's name, right? Or it's a girl and calling her herself Kevin. And so Beidou's voice cloning AI can swap genders and remove accents. This is just the beginning of the type of manufacturing and AI that's happening. I'm gonna explain this AI, but first let me go through some very basic stuff, right? <coughs> What's happening in the world? <coughs> Robot to worker ratios are rising rapidly in factories around the world. Sunaa, Sanaa. Where is the places where things are manufactured? Factories, right? Sanaa is Sanaat. It means places is the is the world of manu, is the world of factories. Korea, there's 1.78 robots for every 100 workers. 3.1 in Japan for every hundred workers 2.9 in Germany okay let's continue 1.6 robots per hundred workers in the United States global average is 0.66 for every hundred workers China is 0.36 for every hundred workers okay now the developing world is most at risk of losing their jobs completely Ethiopia it, it percent of jobs are at risk in the future. Nepal, 80% of jobs at risk. China, 77% of jobs at risk. El Salvador, 75%. And this is just some examples, right? Global average, 57% of the jobs worldwide. India, 69%. Now, let me explain something to you. Uber already can have drivers, uh, cars driving without any drivers, right? Why would they want to do that? less accidents, more efficient, no, in, no, nothing to pay the insurance for damages done, right? Uh, this, so for example, there's going to be no accidents to deal with. There's going to be, you know, just, it's just so much economically, it, the numbers add up to say, look, you get one car that drives on its own and you don't have to pay this guy and all the profits will come to you. You don't have to pay him a a salary you don't have to pay him per hour you don't have to pay him a big chunk of the money he's making while he's driving and then think of all the truck drivers do you know Volvo and Google are working on making trucks that drive themselves no truck drivers need do you know what would happen in the United States when it's not if it's gonna happen it's a matter of when it will happen when there will be no need no need for truck drivers because the truck drives on its own now. Volvo and Google are working on it and the state of Ohio, as I will show you, already has approved roads, long roads, where AI-based cars can be tested. Well, what are all these people going to do without jobs? We're going to be headed towards chaos, obviously. Well, let us continue to look, okay? Because I want you to appreciate this from a Quranic perspective. What is Quran telling us? The developed world isn't much better off. Fresno, which is a place in California, 53.8% of jobs at risk. Las Vegas, 49%. Why? Because the robots will do everything. They've already had the first robot do a successful, completely successful robot dentist surgery, a surgery done by a robot completely successfully. Okay? Uh, without the help of a doctor. Now, why would you pay such a big salary to a doctor if you can get robots to do it? Just buy the robot one time and that's good enough. Las Vegas, 47%, right? Houston, 45%. New York, 40%. San Francisco, Cal who's going to benefit? The people that are making money, the big businesses, they're going to get richer and the poor people are going to lose their jobs. The problem is bigger than manufacturing. In, in lawyers that do insurance underwriting for lawyers, 99% of them will lose their jobs. Farm labor, 97%. Construction labor, 88%. Okay, you know, with the drones and everything, the drones will replace many of the cops because the drones will be looking up there 
and and giving tickets to the traffic that's disobeying the law. Fast food cook, 97%. Truck driver, 79%. Mail carrier, 68%. So, Volvo's self-driving buses and trucks will run on NVIDIA tech. We don't need human beings anymore. The rich people will get richer, poor will get poorer, right? Ohio approves self-driving car tests on public roads. This AI just beat human doctors on a clinical exam. AI in the bottom line, 15 examples of artificial intelligence in finance. You know all the financial decisions that need to be made? Well, robots can do it better than human beings, right? Credit decisions, better with AI. Uh, Zest Financial is an example of that in terms of a company, data, data robot, right? Uh, this is syn synoptic systems, when looking at risk and how much money is being lost. Now it's using AI in finance. In addition to other financial-based services, Synaptic System provides an underlining platform that gives banks and credit institutions more transparency while cutting losses. Okay, uh, underwrite. Okay, uh, un uh, here's it's it's using AI in finance. Underwrite AI analyzes thousands of data points from credit bureau sources to assess data risk for consumer and small businesses loan applicants. Okay, managing risk. Well, they're giving it to the computers to manage manage the risk. Uh, can show provides machine intelligence and data analytics to leading financial institutions like JP Morgan, Bank of America, etc., etc. Right? So you don't need you don't need to hire somebody now to look at the numbers and tell you what to do. Just hire a computer. Just hire, hire buy 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 artificial intelligence. Right? Creates a, a, a Yasadi creates cloud-based and on-premise machine intelligence solutions for enterprises and organizations to solve complex challenges, etc. And these are financial challenges. Okay, for trading, same thing. Interview: How will artificial intelligence transform robotic surgery? I already talked about this a little bit. Okay, uh, just read this. Okay, uh, in an interview in 60 minutes, yes, AI will replace repetitive jobs. Which, now remember this word, repetitive jobs, okay? That takes tasks that can be automated like robot are doing in factories. It will, be, it will potentially replace many white collar tasks, even the rich people. And in the fields of accounting, healthcare, why go to a doctor that is human, that can be tired, that can be upset, that doesn't give you the time, that doesn't ask you all the questions? We go to a robot, well, he's gonna do a thorough exam. Okay, healthcare, marketing, law. Like why hire a human lawyer when you can have a computer lawyer? Hospitality and other areas. Okay. Top twenty lawyers. Top twenty lawyers were beaten by legal AI, artificial intelligence. Okay. Uber expects a long wait before self-driving cars dominate, but the point is they will dominate. They're coming into the scene. Now, you know, Amazon, what it's doing is using the drones to drop the, the, the things that have been bought, okay? So now, we will be looking at this word in Quran. <laughs> Those people whose sa'i, whose action, whose effort, whose struggles have been lost in this world. They failed. But... And this is, by the way, the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me share with you something. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let nations, previous nations, reach heights of power. Yujabu Sahra. They would break into the rocks, break into the mountains until they felt, you know what, we got it made. We have the power. We can do anything. And it is at that moment when you built, you manufactured your big columns and your pyramids and your big buildings. And if you read the Quran, this becomes very clear. It is at that moment when you read the Quran, you find that the Quran, at that moment where they think they got it made, they are all powerful. That's when Allah snatches it all away. And for our, us, it is going to be with manufacturing. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الذي ظل سعيهم في الحياة الدنيا 
those people whose efforts have been completely lost in this world, وَهُمْ يُحْسِبُونَ that they were calculating what أَنَّهُمْ يُحْسِنُونَ that they were perfecting sunah manufacturing. Starting with the industrial age, industrial age is what? The beginning of manufacturing. Now, just remember this word sunah. Okay, we're going to talk about the word sunah. This has a lot, and I'm not. I'm only looking at one aspect of this. This word has a lot of gems. A lot of gold in it, in terms of hikmah and wisdom and foresight and, and just, uh, just so much. Okay? Those people whose efforts were lost in this world, just when they were thinking that they are at the best of manufacturing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it all go awry, all go into waste. الَّذِي ظَلَّ سَعْيُهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا those people whose efforts were lost in this world. وَهُمْ يُحْسِبُونَ But they were thinking, أَنَّهُمْ يُحْسِنُونَ They were thinking that they were perfecting. Sunah, the manufacturing. Okay, now let us look at the meaning of Sana'a and Sunah and its different meanings and let's see how miraculous the Qur'an is. Sana'a, workmanship is skill, a worker which me plainly indicated, okay, it's plainly habitual work or occupation, something that's repetitive, okay, meaning of him who works with his hand, okay, mostly these robots, they're going to be like manufacturing cars, they're going to do what other people's hands were doing, just keep this in mind, okay, so repetitive, habitual work or occupation, this is the first aspect. Then, the other aspect which is very interesting is, that it means to be skillful with your tongue. It means manufacturing and to be skillful in speaking. And so, Imra'atu Sana'a Lisani, a woman who is great at manufacturing her tongue, means a woman who is sharp tongued. Okay? Sana'atun, work or handy, hand, handiwork or art or craft. Okay? Habitual work or occupation. We already talked about this. Okay? Then let's look at the next meaning of the word sunah and sanaa. Okay? Uh, Allah, then over here, uh, look at this, its general meaning. Okay? Manufacturer, worker with his hand, so on and so forth. Uh, here, sanaa'i, meaning somebody says, he is my worker, or he's my maker, or he's my manufacturer. In the same sense, and particularly as a meaning of one who works for hire under a master. So here is a human being or a company, and the company owns these robots. They are for they are hired, right, by the company to work for them. Okay, one who works for hire under a master. Okay, uh, is skilled in working with hands, manufacturing, fabricating, constructing. Okay. This is not where it ends, because it gets interesting when you add it all up. Primarily signifies the doing of eight things. Musna'atun, probably the most important meaning here. Primarily signifies the doing of one, a thing, in order that he may do another thing to the doer of the former thing. So you create this robot that repetitively does something for you. You are its master. And it speaks for you. The meaning of speaking is there. And that's even in the Qur'an, which I will show you. Over here it says, وَاسْتَنَعْتُكَ لِنَفْسِ It quotes the ayah. And I have chosen thee for myself to establish my evidence and to serve as my spokesman between me and my creature, create, create, creatures so that they, so thy doing thus shall be as though I did it. Sana is means repetitive for someone to speak on behalf of someone else as if they are speaking. It is as if you hire someone to do a certain skill or trade for you. You get the, you get the point here, right? This is all pointing when you all add up all the different dimensions of the word, the meaning of the word sana'a and sun'a and musani'atun. All of these words come together to show you it's manufacturing, but it is also when something does a craft and it speaks on your behalf. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, was sana'atuka li nafsi. I did sana'a to you for myself. I chose you to speak on my, my behalf. I chose you to work on my behalf. Right? And so this is the interesting part of it. And so now, Masnu'un, uh, okay? Masna'atun, okay? As applied to speech or saying a sentence, a phrase, or a word. Innovated or coined, okay? Etc., etc. But it has to do with speech, has to do with making, has to do with manufacturing, has to do with repetitive work. When you add something that manufactures and speaks, something that makes like a chef, or and, and it speaks on your behalf, or a computer that diagnoses you and speaks on the doctor's or the hospital's behalf. This is the meaning of the word sunah. Okay, let us look at this. Was li nafsi. I talked about this. Okay, and then he made wrought, manufactured, fabricated, constructed things skillfully. Okay. Uh, and so it continues. But there are so many other aspects of this which I'm not going to go into. Maybe at another time I will talk about them. But now let me show you this. وَاتَّخِذُونَ مَسَانِعَ Masani also means palaces. Because you make them, you build palaces. But وَاتَّخِذُونَ مَسَانِعَ could also mean, based upon the language, that you took for yourself the places of your manufacturing, those things that you had hired and spoke on your behalf, and you created these cities with these robots, right? And now what happens? What Do you thought you would be here forever now because you did this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked this question. Okay? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will leave this ayah for another time, inshallah. Wasna'a, Allah says to Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, Wasna'a fulk, make the ship bi a'yunina in front of our eyes. Wasna'a fulk bi a'yunina, make the ship. The ship has repetitive tasks that need to be done over and over again. It's basically the same repetitive task throughout the process. Just remember this because there will be another example of this. So when the robot or the AI is doing the same robotic task over and over and over and over again. Okay, so that aspect is there. And it's doing being done under the instruction in the case of Nuh under the under the eyesight of Allah, under the eyes of Allah, under the instruction. Bi'ayunina, in front of our, our eyes, meaning with our instruction, with our teaching, with our help, you will do this. Right? So the instructions are there, and the robot is doing the same repetitive thing over and over and over again. Next. Uh, we'll leave this ayah today too, because it's getting late. Uh, so we'll come back to this ayah. <laughs> Those people whose efforts went astray. <laughs> but they were thinking. <laughs> but they were perfecting. This is the Kaf, ayah number 104. They were thinking they were perfecting sunah. They were perfecting the manufacturing of things and the making of things where it would speak on your behalf. This is the meaning, one of the meanings of this ayah. So, sunah in its very general meaning means manufacture and that started with the industrial age. But now sunah as it reaches different levels and it may need to reach other levels that we don't even know about, but it will reach a level where things will do repetitive tasks and make things and do things in a repetitive way, and they will even speak on behalf of the Master. This is what, and Allah says, that plan of yours to make this, and to make this your ideal world, it's going to fail. It's going to fail. It's going to fail miserably. <laughs> Those people whose efforts went astray in this world, because they were calculating and estimating because they thought they're going to make the perfect sunah, perfect manufacturing or someone that or a thing that does repetitive things for you and speaks on your behalf and does a skilled craft and so on and so forth. So 
I will end here today. But I, your homework is, for those of you that listened to all of this, what do you think, how does this ayah play into the times that are coming? And what will be the effect of this automation taking place where there will be no more drivers, there may be less doctors, there will be no need of lawyers. When we reach that point, when we reach that point, what will happen? What does the Quran say about that point? Because they're going to reach the point where they think they have it all made. But their plans will go to waste. And so, how is this all going to play out? How do you think it's all going to play out? From your understanding of the Quran. From your understanding of the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So this is the question for you. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat. Make sure to subscribe today. And make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. Zakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ashhadu an la